17 years. It took 17 years before I built up the courage to ask my mom the truth about our family history. Growing up, I always knew I wasn't my mother's first child, but I never truly knew where my older brother was or what had happened to him. I remember going with my mom as a young child to visit Christopher's grave, but I never asked who he was or why we were visiting. So when I heard about this year's TEDx talk, the thought of not knowing the truth about my older brother automatically came to mind. I was totally nervous and apprehensive to talk to my mom about this topic because I knew it would upset her, but I could not go any longer without not knowing. Of course, I caught my mom off guard when I started questioning her, and I could see the tears welling up, and I could hear the lump in her throat. Despite her emotions, she decided she would share her story with me. I first learned that my mother was with another man before she was with my father. The name of the man was Earl. He was with her for seven years prior to the relationship with my father. Christopher was my mother and Earl's child. When Christopher was only four years old, he became sick. Through the tears, my mother continued to explain a mother's worst nightmare. One night, Christopher could not stop throwing up. My mom and Earl both assumed it was merely a stomach virus, and if his symptoms progressed, they would take him to the doctor in the morning. When they woke up, Christopher's symptoms were much, much worse. His breathing was slowing, and his lips began to turn blue. He eventually stopped breathing, and Earl began to perform CPR. The ambulance arrived to the scene and took him to the hospital. Once there, they brought him immediately to the emergency room. My mom explained that the next thing she knew, the doctors had given her the most devastating news a mother could ever hear. Christopher had passed away. The cause of death was a fatal case of myocarditis, a viral infection, hence the vomiting. It is the inflammation of the myocardium, the middle layer of the heart wall. When the symptoms of myocarditis become severe, the pumping of your blood weakens, leaving your body without clean blood circulating. The lungs were not cleaning Christopher's blood fast enough, thus making his lips turn blue and his lungs begin to fail. If the viral infection is not too severe and caught early enough, myocarditis is not fatal. However, when he was vomiting the night before, my mom and Earl did not realize the severity of Christopher's condition. My mother summed up her story in saying that Earl left her soon after the death of Christopher because it was too painful for her to stay with him. After she finished the story, she brought out Christopher's baby book and documented everything through his infant years. That's him when he was first born. Sorry. That's my mom and Earl and baby Christopher. And that's him when he was a couple years older. As my mom and I flipped through the pages, neither of us could do anything but cry. I hugged my mom tighter than I ever have. This is when I finally realized that my mom is in fact human. Growing up, I always saw my mom as some sort of superhero. She went to work in the mornings and then came home every night to take care of her three children. She was basically working a double shift every day, and I had no idea how she did it. On top of that, she was also a full-time dance mom. From the age of two, I went to dance classes every week. My mom always had my costumes ready, along with my hair and makeup ready for my performances. My mom did it all. She wakes up every single day with a huge smile on her face. I saw her as incredible, invincible, and immortal. I never saw my mom cry. I never saw her upset. But as soon as we started flipping through the pages, I knew that she was just like the rest of us. I had finally understood that my mom does not have superpowers. As most people will be let down when they finally realize that their parent is not indestructible, I felt the complete opposite. I was never really one to tell my mom about my issues, or when I was upset, or when something was bothering me. Instead, I would vent to my friends, or just keep it all bottled up. Now that I've seen my mom hurting, and I've been her shoulder to cry on, I feel so much closer to her. I know that she will be my shoulder to cry on. I know that she isn't a superhero. I know that I can connect with her now. At the same time, my mother's ability to act as a personal superhero throughout my childhood has inspired me beyond belief. To overcome such an unbearable tragedy to raise three more children is absolutely remarkable to me. She's never once allowed her past to affect her parenting. My mom became a superhero after being exposed to an extreme amount of kryptonite. Superwoman still has emotions deep down. My mom shows me that we must live in the present and look to the future. She has never forgotten the past, but she remembers the good. She has taught me that I determine my future and how I want to live my life. My mom has inspired me to become a doctor. Despite coming from a small town, my mom encourages me to overcome that obstacle and move to a big city where I can become an extraordinary surgeon. 
I want to be able to help people with myocarditis and other life-threatening diseases so that no one needs to go through what my mother did. Not everyone can handle a tragedy as well as my mom. I'm so proud to have a mother with the perf perseverance that she has. I am so excited to have a mother that I can now open up to. Though it may have taken 17 re years to realize, I am so thankful to have a mother who motivates me to overcome anything. As Mitch Album explains in his novel, For One More Day, there's a story behind everything. How a picture got on a wall, how a scar got on your face. Sometimes the stories are simple, and sometimes they are hard and heartbreaking. But behind all your stories is always your mother's story, because hers is where yours begins. Thank you.